Daryl Goodman, Director of Products with Achieve It Solutions, and today I'm going to be a warehouse manager looking at the inbound workflow using SAP Business One 9.2 and Resolve. As I start, when I log in, I'm presented with my dashboard, which gives me a collection of KPIs and other areas to give me insight into what's happening with my day before I even drill into my daily workflow. As you can see, I'm able to get a visual representation of activities such as my ter inventory turnover on my top performing items, if I have any new messages or alerts that came from other people, what I last was working on, as well as a couple of dashboards that are giving me information about my inventory status so I could see if I have excess potential inventory, my high or fast moving items, and my shipping performance. So although we're working on inbound, it does give me that information that I don't need to focus on any outbound work because I have no orders that are overdue. Another way that I can see the information about what my peers are giving me is to use the order to cash. Inside the order to cash screen, I'm presented with a visual representation of all of the work that my peers in logistics have performed for me. So you can see that I have 37 purchase orders. I'm able to see what items and which vendors are shipping me material, what items are coming in and the quantity, as well as the dates, and this just gives me an overview of how I can expect to receive material today. You'll notice that from this I get a full 360 view, so I can go ahead and take a look at, at sales activity, inventory activity, as well as production activity without needing to leave the screen. We also have the ability to look at the information that's coming in with containers. So if I'm importing, and we'll get into containers shortly, we're going to be able to review how the container process works. This data came to me because my logistics peers may have used MRP Wizard, for example, to generate purchase orders and production orders, or through automated processing such as EDI. If we look at an example order recommendation, you can see here the system has identified for the logistics department all of the different types of product that they need, and as you can see, it can identify whether or not we need a production order, purchase order, inventory transfers, or other types of requests. This data, in turn, will be used to generate the purchase orders that we're going to be processing with. Another common tool that I share with the logistics is the ability to organize purchase orders into containers for importing. The importing can be done from overseas or domestic using rail cars or other types of product. So for example, you can see here this container is actually a collection that I'm importing where I've consolidated from multiple vendors and multiple purchase orders. In this case, I'm bringing in both apple juice and sparkling water, and you can see that I'm able to identify the total quantity that's coming in for the shipment. Further, I can look at the subcontainers, so I can see by item what containers the material is on, or by container, I can see in each container what products are going to be received. Identifying these containers allows me to be able to manage them both from a logistics point of view, but from my perspective as a warehouse manager, when this particular container comes in, I'm going to know exactly what products I'm expecting inside, and I can actually receive container by container. Additionally, it gives me insight into how many actual packing units I'm able to see. As you can see here in the number of packages, I'm able to compare the fact that I'm getting 35 units, but only 7 pallets. Additionally, by looking at the status, you can see that it's cleared customs, which means it's available for me to receive at the warehouse. When I'm in the warehouse, both my staff and I can use the Revo Resolve Mobile Suite to be able to interact with the system while working on any smart device. Using the smart device, as you can see, I can interact with almost all the functions that I can while using the full desktop version that I would need to perform in the warehouse. You'll see that I have the ability to do picking, inventory, production, and more, but today we're going to focus on receiving. In receiving, you can see I have the choice of receiving by purchase order or by container. First, let's start by receiving an individual purchase order. Since the material is coming in at my dock, I'm able to look at the packing slip and it has my purchase order number. So if it was barcoded, I could scan it or I can otherwise just directly enter the purchase order number. And as you can see, it loads the contents. Immediately, I'm able to scan the barcode on the product. And it moves in to be able to ask me which bin I want to be able to receive, I want to put the material into. In this case, I scan the bin and I enter in the quantity. As you can see, the system was expecting three, however, and I'm going to confirm that we're getting three. Next, because this product was serialized, it brings me to a screen that prompts me for information. Now, I could scan each individual serial number or enter the information in manually. However, my vendor has supplied me with a 2D barcode, so in one scan, I'm able to quickly capture all three serial numbers. 
If I needed to edit or maintain a serial number, I can tap on a serial number, add extra information, and be able to add the line back. At this point, I'm just going to commit and save the serial numbers. I'm now returned back to the purchase order screen, where I'm going to use this as an opportunity to go through some other functionality that we can do. As you notice, I have the ability to add remarks. This is going to give me the ability to put in any information that I may need to communicate internally or otherwise. So for example, if I want to tell them that serial number two is damaged, I can put in a note back to my AP to indicate that I recommend that we ask for a repair credit since we can keep this product. Additionally, if your device supports a camera, you'll be able to take a picture of the image and be able to attach the image to the purchase order as well. You'll also notice that I can change the form settings to be able to choose which fields I'd like to work with. And I can also use the hide finished functionality, being able to show me when I've actually received all the material on this purchase order. I'm simply going to finish the purchase order, and immediately the purchase order is now updated as being received inside of SAP. Next, let's review how you can receive by containers. To remind you, a container represents how the product is actually shipped during an import from overseas or a rail car, for example. In this case, I have container shipment number eight which contain two different purchase orders. As I take a look here, I'm going to go ahead and indicate that I am going to receive only the first container. And you can see that the, the shipment is further reduced to show only the information that was packed on that one container. Next, as we look at the items that are in this container, I would like you to notice the units of measure. Each unit of measure is able to have a barcode that represents how much inventory is contained in that packing unit. So although we might be stocking all of this information in eaches, by supporting multiple units of measure, I can scan once to represent the receipt of an entire packet. So for example, I can scan a barcode that represents the individual eaches, showing me that I'm receiving the pollen spring in eaches, or, and I'll go back, I can scan a barcode that represents the case, allowing me to be able to receive in cases. In this case, I'm going to indicate that I'm receiving the 35 cases to a bin. I'll enter in all 35 cases and add the information. Again, if I've checked hide finish, you can see that I now only have one item left to receive. In this case, we'll receive in the item AS1. Again, I'll scan a bin location and receive the one pallet. Having processed each of the items, I'll go ahead and finish this. And now, without having to go into individual documents, I was able to receive the entire container as it actually was imported, even though it was multiple purchase orders and different items. Another way that I receive material is by getting an inventory transfer, in this case from a distribution center. So my DC has sent me a, an inventory transfer, and when it hits my doc, I know that they've sent me document number 16. So I can enter document number 16, and it will show me once again that I'm receiving some of these nano SIN cards. And in this case, they're coming from my in transit warehouse to my warehouse, warehouse number one. Again, I'll scan the item, and the system will prompt me which bin I want to receive the material into. I'll confirm that I got three units. And because this is serialized, it's going to ask me which serial numbers I've received. I can use the lookup to see which serial numbers were sent and select the serial numbers or scan them. As I'm receiving each unit, the system is keeping track of how many I have scanned, how many remaining, and ensure that I received the correct and actual number. Once I've received all the units, I can confirm that I have no more that I was expected to receive. I see that it was zero, and I'll commit the transfer.
Finally, as I'm going through the warehouse, I discover a product that appears to be out of place. So I use the quick search to get more information about the item, and I see that it is in the system as an office print. I can look to see what the warehouse quantity is, and I can see that I have inventory across the different warehouses, and I can look at the bin quantity to see where it's located uh, within each warehouse. I decide that this is an uncounted unit, so I'll go and I'll add it to the system by making a new transaction uh, a good receipt. I'll select the bin location that I want to put it into, and we'll say that I got one more unit, and I'll finish the goods receipt. It posts immediately, and this has added the new unit directly into SAP without having to go back to the full client. Back inside the office, I come back to my desktop, and I can see that all of the updates that I performed out in the warehouse have been immediately added into the system. If I look at my recent updates, I can, for example, look at the goods receipt PO. You'll see here that this goods receipt PO was created off of purchase order number 440 um, using warehouse user number three. And uh, if I take a look at the opening and closing remarks, you can see that the information that was added out in the warehouse immediately appears in the goods receipt PO. Having watched this video, I hope you can see how as a warehouse manager, you can use SAP Business One 9.2 and resolve with the mobile suite to help you perform all of your inbound logistics functions. If you have any questions or would like more information, please contact us at www.achievements.com. Thank you.